All right, so let's talk a little bit about how this thing works. And I know there's going to be a few of you that are thinking uh, Octoprint, run Octoprint and a relay. Uh, yes, I know that's, that's definitely another route that I could have taken, uh, but I I didn't want to have a whole other processor for this operation, and I didn't want I don't always like being attached to a network. You know, it goes down. It really does. Uh, I've had that happen to me mid print many times. But uh, n at any rate, I, I wanted to have something a little more integrated, and that's what's going on over here. Uh, it's not too complex. It's just, uh, it, it looks bigger than it actually is. There are only two real big components. There's the microcontroller and the relay. Uh, that's really all you need. Uh, of course, you'll need smaller things like a transistor or a diode, but these are the biggest ones. Uh, what you're seeing in the top left over here, these uh, these things, the potentiometer, the... Um, the op amp uh, that only exists due to my selection of triggers. So uh, I, I could have used a traditional micro switch like I have over here on the z-axis, uh, but I decided to go with the Hall effect sensor. Uh, if you saw in the video, uh, there were a few magnets on my extruder motor, and once the magnets came in range to that little tiny sensor, uh, it triggered. And I can even show it happen right now. So I'm going to move over the x-axis, and you can see it triggers. When that happens, uh, there's a red LED on board that just tells me when it's in range. And then uh, this green LED is indicating that, hey, we're counting down. Uh, right, so going back to, let me move this out of the way. Uh, oh, yeah, that's another feature. You can choose to back out at any point during those six minutes and uh, it, it won't just continue so you're not locked into it but yeah going back to the Hall effect sensor I just enjoyed that it was non-contact uh, there's no mechanical wear and it's silent so I don't have to worry about the part breaking down uh, but with that I also had to have a little more circuitry to condition the signal because you can't just use the it's a linear Hall effect sensor so um, it uh, goes between the supply voltage and it idles at about half of that. Uh, anyway, for maybe for a separate video. Um, another added benefit of that is, if you see over here, I've got a potentiometer. And what that allows me to do is uh, tune the trigger distance. And uh, what, what that means is, uh, let's say I'm changing my... my um, my hot end mounting system uh, and I need to somehow mount that magnet on I don't have to be as accurate I don't have to be right in line with where the sensor is I can be um, just ballparking the area and it can trigger so it, it adds a bit of ease of use in that regard and right now I have a temporary setup uh, with the the sensor and the magnets I, I really just got something together to do a demonstrational video as a matter of fact, uh, this whole setup over here is temporary. I, I do want to move towards an electronics box, and uh, that's why uh, this uh, switch and LED is separate from it. And you can see I drilled holes uh, to be able to mount it. Uh, on the other side of the holes, I cleared the copper traces. Uh, I used my Dremel to, to grind away at it uh, so that... <laughs> So that the screws don't short anything, but I'm prepared to, to mount this onto um, a front panel along with the LCD so I can have quick and easy access to this. Um, along with other things, I have plans. I have a, let me see if I can move over. I have my ATX power supply back over here. It's running all of this. Uh, I have my newly installed MKS Gen L board right up there. Yeah, so I have, I have plans moving forward, but for now I just wanted to get something out there. And this is showing my auto shutdown circuit. Alright, 